Coridon versus Terrapagos, and Miraidon versus uh, Coridon. So it's very exciting to be able to get to see this today here, right now. Yeah, this is looking to be an amazing match here. We've seen it before, we've seen both these teams, but we haven't seen the full breadth of either of these teams. We could see that Golden Go yeah, once again. Yeah, the Maybe Golden even Go we saw earlier, uh, it set up a nasty plot and it unfortunately uh, got knocked out without doing any damage. So we'll see if uh, it'll be coming into play here today, although it isn't a particularly appetizing bring into Miraidon, uh, Volcarona, and Iron Hands, so all Pokemon that resist steel, but we are going in here with Incineroar and Tropagos versus Volcarona and Miraidon. Yeah, this is looking to be an interesting match here. Leading the Terrapagos into the Miraidon, the Volcarona also here, trying to get these Quiver Dances off. Yeah, so Rowan just leads with the dual threat here, right? Uh, Rowan, uh, obviously the Miraidon, very strong Pokemon, very threatening Pokemon, all eyes on that. However, that Volcarona is equally threatening if it gets all those, uh, all those Quiver Dances, right? And we see Rowan just contemplating it, potentially just going for the Terrasolize Bull Switch. He does need the Terra to get the KO on the Incineroar, uh, but you know, if it gets faked out and the Joshua goes for a Terrasolize Terra Star Storm, that uh, it's gonna be super effective against any Pokemon that's Terrasolized, and it's gonna be an easy one to KO on the Miraidon. It should be a good KO for Gref, getting that boost from the Seed, the Electric Seed there. Still a little bit tankier against that Incineroar there. So we see that Incineroar switched in, so uh, with the draft on the field, the Fake Out's not gonna go off, and it's very much looking like this Incineroar uh, doesn't have much time left on this field anymore. No time is taking for this Incineroar. There's the Volt Switch as well. Will it take out the Incineroar? It very well should, and it, and does. it does. Again, stronger than Dynamax, Max Lightning from Reggie Alecki. And the nice thing here too is that we see Josh didn't terrestrialize that Terrapagos. So with that information, Rowan can uh, very uh, you know leisurely pick what uh, Pokemon he wants to switch in, knowing that this uh, this Terrapagos is going to go for a single target move and opts to go for the. Iron Hands. For the Iron Hands. Attack item because the Electric Crane, there's the Terra Star there School. It is. But Iron Hands, very bulky on the the special side with the help of that Assault Vest. And now Rowan looking very good for uh, just a, a classic fake out trick room. Established the speed control against uh, what uh, is a Tailwind team on Joshua's side and have uh, an Iron Hands in front of Terrapagos and Raging Bull. Iron Hands is included uh, sometimes on these Miraidon teams specifically to deal with Ter uh, Terrapagos and Raging Bull, both Pokemon that can give Miraidon some amount of trouble or at least force some mind games. But now uh, Joshua says, I don't want to potentially take a Drain Punch. I'm going to swap in uh, this Ogre Pond prioritizing health on that Tropagos. And there's the fake out. There it is. Oh, oh let's the see if this trick room goes off now then. It, it does it oh, gets fully parried. Wow. First now, turn Joshua looking, Wong. Now this here, you know, Rowan very much had the plan in mind of just having Trick Room and being able to steamroll through the rest of uh, Joshua's team, but now that plan has uh, fallen apart here a little bit. He, like, what? We'll see how uh, Rowan uh, uh, re, re maneuvers and, and improvises on the spot here, uh, coming up with a new plan. And also, it's on Joshua to take this opportunity, try to take this uh, and convert it into a win. Exactly, gotta try and turn this one around here. We've seen so many comebacks today. Ivy yeah, Cudgel lot. doing a lot and of damage, not taking up with a Draco Meteor. Yeah, so Rowan perhaps, uh, you know, uh, just calling that this Iron Hands is going to get taken out. Uh, chose not to go for the Trick Room because had he gone for the Trick Room, that Miraidon would be in Trick Room as a very fast Pokemon in a disadvantaged situation. Volcarona too. Uh, you don't want Volcarona uh, clicking Quiver Dance under Trick Room. Uh, be lowering its speed, although boosting uh, special defense and special attack. 
There we go. He gets the Hadron engine going now. Going for the discharge of this Raging Bolt, though. Not going to be too affected by it. Ooh. Oh, can't get the helping hand off either. We'll see if... Uh, you know, we'll see uh, the exact ramifications of this here, but going for the discharge, not going to do a lot to the Raging Bull, and the Frick Draft's going to go down, and this Bull Corona is also going to switch in, and, you know, this Marina is going to knock out its own partner at this rate. That's pretty much the, whole, the only result of that. Raging Bull took very middling damage there, and, and the, the snarl, snarl. But it does miss, so Miraidon still has the superpower to, um, Discharge ready to go, but um, being locked into an electric move against this Raging Bull just gracefully accepts defeat and moves on to game two. Yeah, and now we're moving on to game two. Doesn't feel like going for that potential comeback angle because it's just too hard. The restricted yeah. still up. And Back. Snarl, there's too many things going against you, so that's a reasonable forfeit right that there. paralysis into fully para is not a very high chance, right? It's 2.5% chance, but Joshua was fortunate enough to get it uh, and completely capitalized on that, right? It was, it was looking uh, potentially rather uh, precarious for Josh, but uh, good on him for, uh, you know, seizing that opportunity. You know, you can't, you can't be soft in that kind of, kind of you know, no. it, you can't, it is, Typically, you know, playing against friends, you get something like that to happen. You, you say, "Oh, uh, sorry, like, um, yeah. I, you know, I, you know, I don't want to win that way." But you know, when, when in a, in a, in a serious competition like this, you just take it. You just take it. You know, unapologetically, you take every chance you get. Uh, that is what it means to be a competitive player. So, exactly. You play for your outs, you play for those wins, you play for those small win conditions. Absolutely. And that's what competitive gaming is all about here. In any sense, any sort of game. And honestly, looking at these teams here, Joshua looking on track to win. He didn't even really rely on that Terrapagos yeah, very much, the just a little bit. Yeah, didn't end up terrestrializing in that game, I believe. And, you know, Rowan losing in that... that fashion, losing to a 2.5% chance, maybe inclined to just think like, hey, my plan would have worked 97.5% uh, of the time. I might just, I should just like go for it again, right? But uh, actually uh, opting to s maybe switch it up a little bit here, uh, leading with her giraffe and getting ready to just rip the Terra Electric, Electro Drift, boosted by Helping Hand. That does actually take the KO on this Terrapagos, regardless of whether it Terra's or not. Wow, that is, would be an amazing play right here. And He's gonna Stinner's go for it. not doing anything too, right? We but he have does to go see for the potentially. Or, yeah, we'll see how uh, Rowan navigates this uh, and, and see how Joshua reacts to this immense amount of pressure. That Terrapagos uh, very much threatened to just get knocked out turn one without doing anything, but we see the terrestrialization on one side. It's going to be the Terrapagos trying to get rid of the electric train and maybe hope, hope for the survival. Exactly, you're hoping and betting on that survival and you need to get this thing going quick. I'm sure you won without its mainstay last time, but you want to at least try and get as much use as you can. But it comes out. Uh, yeah, so Rowan just says, hey, I'm not gonna take it right now. You can you can terrestrialize if you want, but now that you've committed the ter terrestrialization on this Terrapagos, uh, I can come back in later with Electric Train, and you can't do anything about it, and I'm gonna try to sweep you from there. Terra Star Storm is still gonna do a decent bit of damage to this Brigoraf. Gonna take it down to half. Knockoff comes out here into the Iron Hand, so the future uh, Terra. Star Storms are going to do a little bit more damage to that Iron Hands, uh, but at the same time, it is still an Iron Hands in Trick Room against two Pokemon that are weak to fighting, and he additionally has the threat of Fake Out. Yeah, that Fake Out pressure there. Could even go for the Helping Hand to just yeah. ensure a knockout. So, 
you know, another thing to keep in mind too is that by boosting uh, the damage output on this uh, Iron Hands here, uh, if you click Drain Punch, by dealing more damage, you heal more HP. So it's very reasonable to just go for the Helping Hand, just go for as much damage as you can to, in order to heal up as much damage as you can. Especially after losing the Assault Vest here, you want to have a little bit more health left on the Iron Hands, uh, and it just heals all the way up to full. So, you know, although that Terra Star Storm is threatening a lot of damage after losing the assault vest at full health you'll you might say yeah it'll do damage but I i'm okay with it i will win this exchange should it come to it exactly you have to have that confidence going forward and now drain punch helping hand being hovered once again some he, ideas brewing in Rowan's ideas, head. Yeah, he knows that this is an advantageous position. Just considering all the options, just choose the right one. Uh, you know, you want to press the advantage. You want to uh, convert any advantage towards victory. Now, Joshua forced to go for the follow me in order to even do anything with that Terrapagos. It does so much damage. That was a drain punch, a 75 yeah. base power move. That did so much damage, and that's not even in terrain. This, this Iron Hands isn't even Quark Drive boosted, and Ferret Draft also survives one, once more, uh, providing additional Helping Hand support. It survives one more time, letting one more helping hand go forward. Mm -hmm. So I think Rowan is going to go all out on this Terrapagos, but yeah, and most likely it's going to be follow me back into that. Yeah, Okabon. I mean, Josh has to do it, right? If Rowan keeps targeting that Terrapagos, uh, right? If Josh doesn't go for a follow me, that Terrapagos is going to go down and it might it might happen here. Josh going for the protect on the Ogre Pond, just hoping that maybe uh, Rowan makes a mistake go into their Ogre Pond, but no, Rowan just goes for the conventional uh, move, just going into the Tropos, taking the KO, punishing Joshua for trying to fish for uh, an error on Rowan's end. Yeah, a beautiful play by Rowan, just keeping the plan simple. Beautiful, and this is the last turn of Trick Room 2, and the Ogre Pond just protected. It's wide open to be picked up by this Iron Hands once more. And once the Trick Room runs out, the Miraidon comes back in and is ready to just take a free knockout onto that Raging Bull with the Draco Meteor. Exactly, it's in a very good spot right now. Helping Hand, yeah. getting so much use here. Now, I, s I believe he's targeted. Ooh, went for the double protect. Just saying, hey, like, you probably want to, you want this ogre pond, right? Let me just see if I can get the double. But he doesn't fall for it. He just goes for the raging bull. Wow. Uh, yeah, just reading. Joshua was read. You know, that was, uh, you know, multiple levels of uh, just, you know, predicting what Josh would go for here. And it's very tempting to just go for uh, an attack into the Raging Bull, right? Because the Raging Bull has a lot of HP, so Drain Punch would heal a lot of health. An absolute yeah, absolutely. Now blast that he's gone for two protects, the odds of another protect being successful on this Ogre Pond is going to be one ninth. So just double target on both Pokemon and just try to pick it up. But Joshua able to pick up the KO on both Pokemon. Okay, getting a nice double KO there, sending out the second wave of Pokemon. But now yes, there's going to be some electric GG. terrain. We'll, we'll see how this plays out here. Miraidon and Ursa Luna Ooh. in back. Two very strong Pokemon, I believe. This is going to force him to want to go for this Ogre Pond first, though, because that Ivy Casual threatening Ursa Luna. Yeah, be pretty... I do believe that it is relatively safe to just go for, uh, let's say, a discharge, right? Ursa Luna is immune to it. Just exactly. go for the discharge, hit both oh, Pokemon, the get the KO here. onto the Ogre Pond, and, and maybe this Ursa Luna outspeeds the Raging Bull and can just. Uh, get a KO with the Earth Power in that sense. Oh, but but uh, if you Terra, it loses that coverage. Uh, it does, it does indeed. Well, we'll see uh, what Rowan, well, what both of these players have uh, uh, planned for us here. Yeah, Rowan going through the normal on. Terra, probably trying to get that defensive coverage against the Ogre Pond. But now, he's gonna lose that defensive coverage against his own Discharge here. So we gotta hope that he's tanky enough to take it. Rebecca goes and lands the Draco Meteor, so that 
should most likely seal up, seal up this game too for Rowan's favor. Uh, this Ogre Pond most likely is not going to be able to get through this Mirai Don and this Ursaluna lost that ground typing, so this Ivy Cudgel is not even going to be super effective. It gets the crit, but it doesn't. It just deals oh. half. And, and the Blood, Blood Moon. Moon comes in. It's going to be an easy pickup. Yeah, very strong. This is very few moves that are as strong as Blood Moon. Blood Moon is indeed one of the strongest moves in the game. Uh, you know, in a restrictive format, right? You, th you conventionally maybe think like you should deal all your damage using your restrictive Pokemon, but uh, Blood Moon <laughs> very much uh, can swing uh, just as hard as some of these other restrictive Pokemon. So, um, you know, having burst damage from something that's not Rhydon can be very advantageous in certain situations. Yeah, and now, just like that, we're going to be going over to a game three. It looks like Rowan just played that one amazingly there. Joshua now has to rethink his opening game plan. I think that was, it was a all very on good that opener. Call on Rowan side, game two, going for the Brickerath. Right on lead and uh, right into Joshua's Incineroar. That Incineroar just sat there not being able to do anything, right? The Frick Wrap uh, ability stops the, uh, the fake out and the Tropagos can't protect. Incineroar can't protect either. It was just uh, it was just a sandbox situation for Rowan. He could do whatever he wanted, so uh, you can't let that happen as Josh. Uh, Josh uh, needs to reconsider uh, potentially um, and other ways to handle this uh, lead combination. Exactly, there's so many things to consider here. And there's so many hard choices to make, but I think we're just gonna keep seeing the same few Pokemon here. Maybe Joshua will whoop out that Golden Goat, but I feel like there's some anxiety there because it did not get the use yeah, of the, the one Golden time we Goat, saw especially it. too, right? You're facing down a Maridon that can one want to KO you. The Golden Go making it rain is not going to do much damage to an Assault Vest Iron Hands. If Will Corona gets some Quiver Dances, that's going to also take negligible damage from make it rain. So, you know, Golden Go not a particularly appetizing lead, and Whimsicott Tropical just comes out in the hopes of trying to catch the Murai Don Draft lead again. But uh, Rowan switches, switches things up, goes for the Iron Hands, immediately putting pressure onto that Tropicos. Yeah, putting a lot of pressure there. One thing to note, though, is that Whimsicott, uh, you know, you don't think of it as a damaging piece, but Moonblast is one of the strongest moves, uh, you know, generically available to a lot of Pokemon. Uh, and, you know, Moon Moonblast can do a pretty decent amount of damage to either of these Pokemon, and it's pretty fast. So, you know, depending on whether, how this Miraidon is trained, uh, this Whimsicott could very much, very well outspeed and hit this Miraidon uh, for a lot of damage before it gets to move. And just Joshua says, no, I'm not having any of this. I'm just going to switch in my, or yeah, my Raging Bolt to take an electric move. And thanks to Raging Bolt's times for resistance to electric, does that very well. Yeah, it takes very little damage there. Good to switch in uh, to tank the hit there. But now, we're going to see another switch in on this we'll side. We'll see what this Whimsicott went for. Did it go for, did you see, I may have missed uh, whether it went for a Tailwind that turn or not. No, it is the Moonblast, like we said. Deals a third. It might be in range for t an additional two more Moonblasts. You might think that might uh, that might be a little unrealistic, but let's consider that this Whimsicott has a focus, actually. It's guaranteed two more attacks, and this Iron Hands is slower than the Whimsicott, so you know it's going to be easy, to, relatively speaking, to get two more Moonblasts into uh, the Iron Hands. And just trying to target down this for a draft, hoping that the Trick Room won't come out, but... Yeah, once again, you gotta hope for that Trick Room, but it's always a little bit of a gambit. There it is. There There's it the trick is. Room. It's gonna get set up from here on out. This Iron Hands is looking to bulldoze through Joshua's team now. Like, there's a Whimsicott, but what do you do? You can't Encore to... You can't Encore the for a draft to reverse it using uh, Whimsicott's Prankster ability because of uh, the Armor Tail ability on Ferdraft actually blocks that. But Rowan says, "Okay, I still, I still want to, you know, apply even more pressure. Just proactively swatch, switching in that Ursa Luna, just taking maximum advantage of his limited Trick Room turns." 
they're using a lot. Oh, green punch. Wow. Ooh, that does a lot of damage. Whoop. But this Whimsicott, you know, this Whimsicott's certainly not weak to say, but because of all that drain punching that the Iron Hands did, uh, we're back to square one. That Iron Hands just clicked <laughs> drain punch twice and healed up to full. And, you know, I said that the Moonblast, three Moonblasts would get it, but, you know, now now it's four. Yep. And it's like a Sisyphusian task right here. You're going to keep having to roll that Moonblast. Now that's that a hill. very scary situation. This Ursa Luna is maybe the scariest Pokemon to be looking at in Trick Room, aside from maybe Calyrex Ice Rider. Whimsicott, just protect, just desperately trying to stall out these Trick Room turns. Yeah, both Pokemon trying to protect, just trying to stall it out. If if the Trick Room expires, then the Whimsicott can go for a Tailwind and try, maybe uh, reverse, just you know, turn turn everything on its head uh, with uh, Terrapagos being able to outspeed the Maridon in Tailwind and, you know, prepare to just try to sleep with Terra Star Storm. Exactly. Sometimes you have to go for these stall tactics to get yourself in the position Three where you can possibly turns. win because Joshua has everything stacked against himself right now. He needs to try and go for a little bit of a better position. Yeah, maybe. Does Joshua just go for uh, another set of double protects? Just try to get that one third chance or does he switch out and let something else take the hit? Try to switch Whimsicott back in and click protect from the final turn of Trick Room to weather the storm here. Oh, but it actually goes for a tail and just sacrifices sacrifices that Whimsicott, uh, and you know, in in a few more turns, right? Even even though this uh, in the short term uh, is is not advantageous for you, uh, Tailwind in Trick Room that's not going to do anything for you. But when the tail the Trick Room expires, uh, that Tailwind is still going to be active, and you know, Josh just hoping that that's going to be enough to uh, clear through all of Rowan's Pokemon, which. I don't think has taken that much damage, right? No, the Drain Punch has been an absolutely massive mm -hmm. sustain for Iron Hands. Quirk Drive goes off, though. This and now it's going to be Terrapagos and whoever uh, this last part. It's Raging Bolt. It's Raging Bolt. Ooh, and it is not, it is at minimal HP left. It is in range of basically any attack that uh, Rowan can go for. And it's a pretty safe play to just, oh god. They attack both Pokemon. Like, neither of these Pokemon can click protect, so Rowan just attacks and just, nope. If Terrapagos takes a lot of damage and the Raging Bolt goes down at the conclusion of this turn, it's gonna be a very easy cleanup with the Maridon potentially. Yeah, this is going to be absolutely massive here. The Hyper Voice. Uh, massive come Hyper through. Voice Terrastalization boosted. How much is it gonna do? Ooh. So much. Can, can Terrapagos in Tailwind? To pull off the one beam workers. Exactly, that's gonna be a massive question Star right here. Storm, single target. It needs this it Maridon out here. Okay, so that's one. We need three more. It needs the Maridon out here to use the Terrastalition to try and clear the, 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 the electric surge, but it's not gonna go through. Now the Tailwind, or the Trick Room is gone, but the Tailwind is still active, so. We'll see how Rowan tries to navigate through this end game. But this Terrapicos is now locked into the Terra Star Storm. There's no more boost uh, burst damage available through the use of something like Hyper Beam or Earth Power even, right? Earth Power is a pretty decent move in this situation with Maridon and Iron Hands being both weak to ground. Seems like a pretty ideal uh, move to lock into, but however, it's almost as if Joshua was forced to use the Terra Starstorm because of that Ursaluna and tries to go for it but does not get the KO and Drain Punch finishes it off and concludes this best of three. A beautiful best of three, running it back from the pools. The grudge match ends up going the way of Joshua. And now... Rowan. That's Advancing it. into finals. Yeah, Rowan making it all the way, bringing Is it, it back. Is it going to be another Maridon victory today? P possibly, possibly. It depends all on who his opponent is. We could see two Maridon teams. We've been seeing a lot of Maridon today yeah, after. Really, you know, like the whole field is like trying to prepare for Maridon, right? We've seen some Rhyperior uh, action um, in the previous few days. Um, and like people are definitely trying to prepare for Maridon, but Maridon keeps 
coming out, but keeps performing in all in spite of it. it really just highlights just how powerful this Pokemon is. Exactly. Very, very powerful Pokemon indeed. And two very, very powerful trainers in tow. And this has been such an amazing day of Pokemon after seeing all the metas shift day after day. You can even look at the stats like we were looking at earlier. Things would shift back and forth in terms of popularity. And now we were seeing Ice Rider all day yesterday. Yes. Now here in the top cut, we haven't seen any at all here on stream. So maybe going into the grand finals, if one has made its way through, that could be a possibility. Yeah, it could be another Maridon versus Ice Rider finals. Uh, you know, I, we don't know what uh, is going to be, at least we know that Rowan is going to be in finals, but we don't know what uh, his opponent is going to be. So, you know, exciting games up ahead in this grand finals. Exactly. Very exciting game so far. But with all that being said, we're going to throw it over to a quick break and we'll be right back with the grand finals of this MSS.